Armored Core Law, the story of Armored Core Nexus. The year is now ED-0259, 55 years after the corporation has managed to secure passage into the region named Silent Line. Their growth and power has only doubled in this time, with Mirage being seen as the most powerful corporation, Crest Industries as the second, and Kisaragi, who seemed focused more on research, leaving room for a new company to try and stand with these corporation giants, Navis. And they would do so thanks to their recent discovery of a new resource, which allows them to build advanced technology. However, the little upstart company would soon face the reality of playing with giants, as Mirage at once would request this new resource be shared among the others, for the good of everyone. This would be put before the OAE, the Organization for Administrating Enterprise, designed to police the corporations and keep them all in check. However, in truth, it held very little power, and when it tried to enforce this idea, Navis would simply ignore them, making it clear it had no intention of sharing this new resource with anyone. It's here that after this meeting, a war between corporations would begin, with Raj taking the first move a year later by moving in a research team into an area controlled by Navis, said to be where this new resource is, and in return, Navis would send in a raven to take them out. This is the first mission for the Raven of Nexus, a new pilot working for Raven's Ark, the successor to Global Cortex. It functions very much like its old self, however it is noted the Ark had one rule that separated from its once underground roots. No Raven could directly accept a contract from a client without going through the Ark first. Put in place to keep the corporation's influence out of this neutral corporation, the Raven of Nexus would be told all this through an email before being introduced to their operator in another email before being sent off to their first job. Acting on Navi's behalf, the Raven would attack a squad of three Mirage Blue MTs in Ruga Canyon. It is reported that should the Raven be lacking in the skill to complete this mission, they will have it completed by another Raven by the name of Jacko, who will mock the skills of the downed Raven. However, what is known is this attack would quickly be reported to Mirage. This sees the company's executives call an emergency meeting to discuss this being an attack from Navis, who at the time refused to comment on the matter. It would be the match that starts the flames of war burning between these two, as shown by Mirage, as the next report the Raven reads is about how the corporation building a base deep within Navis' territory to learn about the new resource. In the report, it states this would require building a forward staging base on the Abax Plain, well within Navis' controlled territory and strong resistance is expected. Mirage states this base is not being built for their own benefit, but instead it is vital to the future of all corporations and OEE should support their efforts. It is the start of the Raven seeing the political side of Mirage in action, putting pressure on an organization that is meant to maintain order among these corporations. However, a Raven has little time for the battlefield of words, as their next mission would take them to this half-built base in the Abax Plain. The goal is to protect it from a squad of attacking helicopters, and it seems this base would need all the help it could get, given the performance the Mirage MTs show during the attack. The Raven, however, would not have this trouble, as shooting the squads down, they would return to the Ark for more missions, and reports from their operator. One report would be about the newly built training facility built by Mirage, but operated by Raven's Ark. The facility is completely soundproof and able to survive fires and earthquakes. This facility would allow Ravens to train there for a price, and any research done there is kept secret, making it already gain praise from Kisaragi, a corporation with a history in testing and research that could only benefit from a secret place to conduct their research. However, in truth, this was more a money-making effort by Mirage and Ravens Ark, who, it is guessed, would split the earnings made by the arena. Along with learning this, the Raven would also get the history on the OAE, as explained, they are meant to be an organization who oversees corporations and maintain order among all businesses. However, they are too timid in their actions when dealing with the corporations. As such, their influence within their role is best described as non-existent. As if to make this even more clear, there is another report that states that Mirage now demand OAE supply the corporation with supplies since their base building effort is facing some setback, and OAE folds like a cheap suit. That said, it is made clear that within the ranks of the OAE, some do not like this, and seem very open to report where these supplies are being kept, as if they want them to be taken. Perhaps to make sure the point is made even clearer, the Raven of Nexus' next mission would be from AOAE to destroy the supplies they intend to give Mirage.
Naturally, with a large paycheck and a bonus on the line, should all these supplies be taken out, the raven takes his mission and puts all the supplies to the torch. It's an attack that instantly is reported on when the raven returns, along with another report on an AC arena being opened up close to the territory of Navis. It is noted this means now all ravens would be ranked and higher ranking ravens would be offered more lucrative jobs. But anyone who thinks it is a quick way to make money should know only the top rankers among ravens will be profiting from this. It is a new way for the raven to make money, as well as for the Ark to show off their ravens to corporation representatives and milk the public for their money too. All this entertainment aside, what the raven would focus on is a report on the attack on the OAE supplies bound for Mirage. OAE would make the security footage of the raven's attack public and brand it a barbaric act of terrorism and significant delays to Mirage's base are to be expected, nothing like being made to look like the villain. It is, however, something all ravens must accept, that behind closed doors, these corporations and organizations would say one thing and then spout another to the public. Nevertheless, the work of a raven is never done, as they would move on to their next mission to take out Mirage's special forces which are invading Baylode City, Navis's walled city, in the desert with a large population and where Navis headquarters is based. It would be a tough fight for the Raven with these MTs equipped with ECM jammers making targeting them hard. However, with only an attack force numbering of 4 in total, the Raven proceeds to take out two of these attackers before the last two call for a retreat. However, as they do, another Raven shows up on the scene. The meeting of Jinobi to the Raven is flashy and stylish, as expected from the rank 1 Raven. However, the pair do not share a word before the rank 1 Raven departs. It is the end of the attacking Mirage force, and the Raven returns to base, wondering if Navis hired this Raven as backup in case they failed, or if he was there for another reason. Questions, however, would have to wait, as on their return, the Raven would see reports of the attack on Navis' most secure location, as it now come under martial law, putting the city into a state of uncertainty. While this was going on, it is also reported that a terrorist group would take over an MT factory in the Lectus Plain region. This factory was a joint investment project by both Cress and Navis, however with operations at the facility slowing down, security personnel were cut down to minimum numbers, leading these terrorists who oppose corporations to act. While the report speaks no more of the two corporations' next move, the Raven only has to look to see their next mission from Cress would be taking place in the Lectus Plain, so they knew the answer to the terrorists would be them. However, before moving out, the Raven's operator reports they have made it into the rankings of Ravens making it a big step in their career, and should they improve, they will only climb higher. So now the rank 30 Raven of Nexus heads off into battle against the terrorist forces inside the MT factory. The battle however is very one-sided, as even outnumbering the Raven, the terrorist forces are no match for the Raven's skills, who puts them down even before Crest's invention force arrives. Another battle done, the Raven will return once again to be given a report on the attack on the MT factory be given the name of the raven who they saw in Bayload City, Jinobi, and finally have a situation run down by their operator on the current plans of the corporations. With Rurad planning a full-scale invasion into Navis, putting pressure on OAE to aid them, Navis is trying to resist this attack and have been seen to have a large number of Crest manufactured weapons, leading to the question if Crest is supporting them, and finally, that Crest has made no major moves, only now thinking of putting forces into the narrowly taken MT factory and have been noted to be talking with OAE and Navis. It certainly looks to be a battle between the combined forces of Cress and Navis versus Mirage. However, with no action being taken at this point by Cress, the Raven's next few missions will see them fight an arena battle against Dark Charm, or test Kaisaragi's new bioweapons, which look a lot like large bugs, before having more reports thrown at them. These would include that OAE has now resumed transporting supplies to the Mirage base, and that these all would now be escorted by a security force, but the reported number of these is so small that it shows OAE is not supporting the idea as much as they seem to on paper. Cress has made a move to move a force into the recaptured MT factory, however Mirage believes something is afoot, as this factory has been dormant for a long time now, and suddenly Cress want to move in a permanent security force. A war between Crest and Mirage is looking to be coming, and for the Raven this could be seen even more clearly with the missions on hand, including attack MT transport, which will see the Raven attack Crest transport squads heading towards the MT factories, and another mission from AOE asking the Raven to take out their own transports heading to the Mirage base. 
Whichever one the Raven does, as always, reports will come in after. One being that OAE tried to hold a meeting with the corporations to find a peaceful solution to this new resource, only to then be pressured into aiding Mirage by attacking Navi's garrison guarding the tunnel leading to the Navi's mine and secure the area for safe passage. Along with this, Kisaragi and Navis are having a disagreement about the research going on at their cultivation plant, as Kisaragi wants to stop all research, fearing Mirage would attack while Navis states it is not a military structure and it is safe from such reprisals. More reports means more missions, as the Raven would then take on the mission Eliminate Navis Security. This would see the Raven attacking Navis Garrison on a bridge guarding the tunnel leading to the mine. The flying MTs and sniper MTs of Navis fight back with all they can as the Raven is forced to leap between the bridges. However, the Mercery's skill far surpasses these MT pilots, and the bridge is soon cleared out by the Raven. Another job done, and the events of the world keep on rolling, as the Raven would read about how the water supply to Bayload City stopped this morning, and the corporation has no idea why at this moment. Crest has finally completed the move of their forces to the once joint built MT facility, and has now made it a Crest military base, making this their first military action within the region. OAE, thanks to the Raven, was able to do what Mirage requested, however they now fear Navis will gather more forces at the mine itself, and have asked Mirage to postpone their investigation. A terrorist bombing would happen outside the walls of Bayload City, where an MT loaded with explosive would ram into one of the city's walls, only for the wall to be very lightly damaged. And finally, Mirage announced it will launch an investigation into the cultivation plant jointly operated by Kisaragi and Navis, claiming dangerous research with a new resource is being done there, which Navis would respond to by media saying this is, was not true, and all they wanted to do was one day turn the region's deserts into an oasis with Kisaragi's help. It perhaps then came no surprise to the Raven to then be sent a mission request by Kisaragi to attack the research facility, the very one that Mirage wanted to investigate. It's here the Raven will encounter the bioweapons once again, before taking out their objective, eight cultivation tanks, leading to another round of reports when they return. This time, these are reports about how Mirage has now finished building their base, allowing them to focus all their efforts on investigating Navis. Navis knows this is not an idle threat, and have already been seen to be bolstering their defences. This in turn has Crest and the other corporations now looking to make sure Mirage does not monopolise on the new resource, as new rumours about OAE and Crest strengthening their ties begin, and a weapons company named Use is seen to be developing a new weapons program to sell to the warring corporations. In a final report, it seems the business relationships between Kisaragi and Navis breaks down after the attack on the research facility, with Navis claiming the attack was done by Raven Kisaragi hired, while the other claims it was an accidental fire. This blame game results in the pair's partnership ending, as now it seems the only ally Navis has is Cress. Yet, as always, the jobs keep coming for the Raven, as the next missions the Raven can take is either an arena battle with Brimstone or killing a VIP in a helicopter. Completing either will lead the Raven to have one report and two missions for Kilios Lake Water Filtration Station, the only way the people of Bayload City can get clean water into their homes, and one from Crest to train against one of their ACs. However, back to the paperwork, the report the Raven receives would read about how Navis found what was causing the water blockage of Bayload City, and it turned out to be a living organism getting caught in the filtration system. However, they do not go on to give more information about the organism. It's here the Raven can either choose to fight the Crest AC, which will turn out to be Jinobi, which if the Raven should win against, we'll hear the Crest operator say this. It was just a simple adjustment. What happened? Jinobi, the corporation needs you in one piece. Don't overextend yourself. A slight modification. It is debated about what this modification is, However, from the fact Jinobi can fly and fire his back weapons, it is suggested Jinobi is in fact using the OP Intensify optional part, which would allow him to do this, and explain the shock the Crest Operator expresses, since it seems only a few Ravens have this. We can confirm this later thanks to outside sources from the book Armored Core 10 Complete Works, page 128, which states he is an enhanced human, and the Armored Core Nexus Perfect Guide which shows a bright blue box on Jinobi's bio page, with the words Strengthened Human inside it. However, while the Raven of Nexus may not know about this, this battle, however, win or lose, would not move on until the Raven takes the mission Capture Filtration Plant. 
This mission would see the Raven act as the attacking force of Mirage, as the corporation wants the Raven to take over the plant, which the Raven does with ease. However, it's as the Raven goes to return that suddenly two armoured corps hired by Navis, named Trasher and Vernhunt, will be dropped in to stop the Raven. It is this battle between the three where Vernhunt will be killed, while Trasher flees, letting the Raven finally return home to report that Mirage has now moved in and now controls the main water supply for Bayload City. Things, however, are only going to get worse for the citizens of this city, as the Raven then takes a mission from a terrorist group to attack the power plant that gives power to the city. And the Raven does this, leaving the city in darkness and without water. For their efforts, the Raven is now ranked 20 among the Ravens of the Raven's Ark. For cutting off a whole city from water and electric, they are rewarded for it. Nevertheless, the next missions of the Raven would see them help Crest test a new MT with large heat cannons on its back, and help Navis repel forces that have entered the Blackout City, only to learn later this attack was done by a terrorist group who then threatened the Raven by email calling them a corporate lackey. Threats, however, come with the job. As such, the Raven moves quickly on to their next mission, an area fight with Trasher, the Raven from the Filtration Plant mission. The Raven either defeats this Raven or is mocked by Trasher for losing, resulting in a rank change. However, it's after this battle that the Raven is greeted by a report that Mirage is using their newly captured water filtration plant as a launching point for their planned attack on Bayload City, and are already moving their forces there. It seems the Mirage is ready to take out the little corporation who wishes to fight against giants. However, for the Raven, life goes on, as once again they will help Crest retest their MTs before being updated on the world situation by their operator. In an email titled Power Struggles 3, it explains that Mirage is steadily expanding their influence in the region by taking the water plant and using OAE to launch attacks on Rugen Canyon. Navis has been the subject of attacks from both Mirage and terrorist groups, leaving their main city, Bayload, without water or power, and are just holding on barely. Crest is biding its time with MT tests, showing the corporation is planning something in the future. And finally, Kisaragi has broken all ties with Navis to avoid the wrath of Mirage. Yet while Kisaragi would avoid the wrath of the blue-coloured corporation giant, this would not stop them from attacking their former research partners, as the Raven would see on the mission destroy Kisaragi Frost from Navis, which would see Kisaragi try to take over a water test facility being built by Navis in Kolios Lake. They did this because they believe there is an ancient relic resting at the bottom of the lake, however the Raven of Nexus put a stop to this plan. Yet this is not the only plot the Raven of Nexus would stop, as taking a mission from Crest, they would protect a Crest fuel tank storage from a terrorist force and remove organisms from the Mirage occupied water filtration plant. More missions and another report comes to the Raven after these missions. The report reads about OAE plans to carry out an investigation into the new resource mine controlled by Navis. A monorail will take their team there, and it seems the organization is now following Mirage policies on what to do after failing to find a peaceful solution. But Navis would not take this city now, as the Raven's next mission would see them attack the very monorail the OAE team is travelling on. It is a quick and brutal attack that wipes out the monorail with ease, and the death of this group is quickly reported about on the Raven's return. The report would see OAE call out Navis as an ignorant and dangerous corporation after this attack, to which in return Navis would break away from the OAE, leaving it alone now as the battle between them and Mirage rages on as Mirage intends to fly reinforcements directly through Navis' controlled territory, showing the confidence they have in their victory. In response to this, the Raven will either help defend the underground tunnel of Bayload City from Mirage's invading MTs, or shoot down Mirage transport planes. Either one will result in more reports for the Raven, which include talking about the mission they just completed, and how OAE is now preparing a counterattack against Navis' forces at Ruga Tunnel, which Navis shows no concern about, however OAE has requested the aid of the corporations and Raven's Ark with this. With all this, the Raven is then called to an arena match against a foe named Evangel, a friendly Raven who is quite skilled, and reports vary on if the Raven defeated him or not. However, after this, OAE would request the Raven's help in destroying the armoured monorails of Navis. One could say OAE was looking to do a eye for an eye deal with this battle, and the Raven would gladly shoot out the eyes of Navis for a large pay. With this action, the Raven would allow OAE to take control of the Ruga Tunnel and force Navi forces back into the mine as a last line of defence. Along with this, Crest is also making a move, as a large Crest force now marches on Mirage's forward base, looking to take it. And with Mirage forces so spread out, 
it looks to be an easy crest victory, as this sudden show of force has caught Mirage off guard. It comes perhaps as a moment of wonder for the Raven as to how Mirage was so caught off guard, after the fact Crest has been seen moving forces about the place. Still, what numbers could not fix, money could, as Mirage is quick to offer the Raven of Nexus a large sum to defend their forward base. And who are they to turn down such an offer? The battle would see the Raven take down a number of large MTs with heat producing cannons and fight off a Raven from Crest's own personal stable of Ravens, named Agaria. The Raven of Nexus forces her retreat after trading blows with her. The Raven Returns comes with a report on the attack, stating how it was unsuccessful and how the Crest Strike Force took heavy losses during it. It is also pointed out that Mirage will now have much harder time with Crest starting to attack them. With this news of Crest now doubling production of MTs at its MT factory making the headlines as well, Navis Force's morale seem boosted by this as they celebrate it. It seems the war would gain another member, and while this is going on, the Raven would either take another arena battle against an AC named Wily Tank, or help Kisaragi with testing their new AI-controlled armoured cores. These AI, however, are no match for the experienced Nexus Raven, who returns to read about how Bayload City has now fallen into Crest hands. They attacked and easily took the city from Navis forces, who thought Crest was their ally. Survivors of the attack are now fleeing south, while Crest sets up base in Baylow City. It is clear Crest is on a warpath too against Navis, as the Raven is given a mission to protect the fleeing citizens from Crest's forces who are hunting them down in search of Navis' high-ranking officials. But the Raven will also take a mission by Mirage to take out Agaria, who after her defeat apologises to Jinobi. It seems Jinobi may be closer linked to Crest than then first fought. However, that would have to be looked into later, as the Raven will return to a report Agaria being reported as missing before being emailed by the operator about how they become rank 10 among all Ark Ravens. It is quite the climb, however a Raven does not sit down when there is more to be done, as now Mirage sends the Raven to the Borbus Mine to remove Navi's defence force. This will include a Raven by the name of Pinfire, who is taken out by the Raven after a harsh battle between them both, leaving Navis in a struggling position as Mirage assembles forces for a final blow. The Raven would also get an email from an unknown sender and their operator. The first from the unknown sender would read that the Raven will pay for what they did. This email is not spoken of again, however we can say due to further knowledge of future events that this email would come from Pinfire's son Rimfire, who would be seen later. However, to focus on the here and now, the email from the Raven's operator is another wrap up on what is happening in the world. With Mirage using the water filtration plant as their main base with their force gathering, Crest having taken over Bayload City is now gearing up for fights with Mirage, Nervis has retreated into the new resource mine and is holding out the best it can, and Kisaragi has been quiet with reports pointing at them being the ones behind the organisms who infected Mirage's water filtration plant. Update over, the Raven moves on with another arena fight with Evangel before taking on either a Kisaragi mission to test their AIACs more or to attack a Crest defense force in the tunnel of Bayload City. Either one will result in an email that reads that Evangel has broken the key rule of being part of Raven's Ark and has been dealing directly with Crest. As such, he is removed as a Raven under their employment. With one less Raven to fight for jobs, the Raven has to wonder why Evangel did this. After all, he seemed to be a capable pilot, however perhaps the allure of money was greater. Nevertheless, while Evangel may be gone, the Raven of Nexus will return to work, this time taking a mission from Crest to destroy Mirage Deport. The Raven would take this and there are mixed reports if Jacko, another Raven, was there acting for Mirage. However, reports are unclear and all that is known is that the Raven of Nexus would clear this mission. After this, the Raven would then be sent by Kisaragi to clear out a terror base in the Aris Canyon not only to learn more from it, but also to reuse it as a base for excavation areas aimed at uncovering lost technology. Mirage would also send the Raven to clean up Navi's forces, who had staged a defense at East Rugen Canyon, after Mirage drove them there after many battles. It's after this, more reports will come in, with one stating it has become clear that Ravens play a large part in this war between corporations. However, Mirage hired Ravens seem to outclass Crest ones at every turn. Along with this, the CEO of Kisaragi proposes the corporations enter a peace treaty, where all hostilities would cease and the research of all lost technology would stop, as cooperation between corporations is the only way to a better future. Sadly, as the Raven would find out after taking a mission to attack a Navis warehouse, that the other corporations are less than eager to accept this, as they believe it only benefits Kisaragi 
as they are known to have researched heavily in lost technology, and therefore cannot accept it. Navis has refused to comment, and only the OAE shows total support for the idea. However, given their role to maintain peace, it's not hard to see why. Another mission would pass for the Raven here, wiping out more Navis forces in the desert region before more news comes in. This time it seems OAE is taking point, as they tell Mirage their actions will no longer be tolerated, and station forces outside a Mirage base. However, they have made no attacks thus far. It shows perhaps that OAE does have a backbone. However, since nothing is being done, instead the Raven is sent to take out the power supply of the mine Navis is hiding in. Their return, however, would see a lot of change in the world, and a new email from their next arena foe, Rimfire, who will tell the Raven tomorrow they will square off, and how it will be the Raven's last day. That aside, the more important matters to the Raven and Nexus are first to report that Kisaragi has started to prepare to assault Mirage with their new AC models, while another report comes in from a high-ranking Raven named Jacko, who has discovered an administrator of Raven's Ark has been engaging in illegal activities with Mirage. As such, the Raven has taken drastic measures and removed all old administrators and replaced them with new ones. He ends the report by saying, should any of you have a problem with this decision, then the new Ark has no need for you. And finally, the Crest is struggling financially. This is due to less profit being made on AC parts and the spending on Ravens during this war with Mirage. Profit and war. Without one, the other cannot work. However, for the Nexus Raven, cash is not a problem, but to deal with threats is. As such, the Raven will then head off to the arena match to put down this rim fire before returning to see one of Jacko's new operators contact the Raven about taking over from their old ones. They also point out that a few Ravens have left, but they expect these exiled Ravens will find a place within the corporations. It seems the world is changing fast, and along with it, the corporation is in it as well, as next Raven would have the choice to either defend the Mirage missile outpost or aid OAE in their attack on the Mirage forward base. Either one will result in a report on the selected mission, as well as other news such as Crest now announcing their withdrawal of their forces from Navi's territory, as their headquarters believes they will lose more than they gain if they continue. However, their regional officials disagree, forcing Crest headquarters to issue the retreat order again and stop all future supplies to the region. Top officials from Tisaragi have also disappeared days after the proposed peace, and it is rumoured they are being held hostage by a group of Kisaragi insiders who are opposed to the peace treaty. Fighting within these corporations only makes them look weaker, as the Raven's next missions would see them take back the terrorist headquarters from Kisaragi, who are forced to retreat, and ambush Crest HQ forces. This would see the Raven battle three Crest AI armoured corps for the rebelling Crest regional officers. The effect of this would be felt at once when the Raven return, as it is clear through the new reports that a war between Crest HQ and their regional forces is now in full swing. The Raven, however, could only see more work, as after another arena battle, the Raven would then head out on another mission for Mirage. This time, the Raven would head to Kilios Lake to take out the defense force there and the AC guarding the facility call limit. However, all is not well, as while the Raven of Nexus is fighting, suddenly Mirage starts firing missiles at the facility without warning. It is a clear sign that Mirage wanted not only to get rid of the facility, but also be rid of the Raven they hired. This is even pointed out by the Raven's operator, who states that this is a serious breach of contract, and how they cannot go unpunished. The Raven, perhaps happy to simply be alive, returns to base to see the fallout of this serious breach of contract by Mirage. A report that suggests Mirage conduct is being questioned. It's not exactly what one would expect, after all most tend to act quickly when a deal is broken between two parties. However, once again a Raven's place is not to be their own sword, but instead someone else's. As such, they head off to a new mission from Crest headquarters to take out the transport planes of their regional forces who have stolen an AC called Bailout. It's hardly a challenge for the Raven Neckers, who shoots the transports out of the air, forcing them to drop the stolen AC from a great height. This results in the armor core blowing up as it hits the ground, leaving the rebelling forces of Crest without this AC and more losses on their side. A return to base once again sees that even the report seems to think the Crest headquarters has the upper hand in the war with the rebelling regional commanders. In other news, Raven Art makes it clear to all Ravens Mirage's last action will not result in them retaliating in the same way, however, they will be putting heavy sanctions on the corporation. And finally, there has been powerful electric discharges seen in the South Maria Desert, 
and fearing it could be a military threat, Mirage planned to investigate the area. In fact, the Raven of Nexus is even offered this job. However, they may also choose to do another arena fight or take on a request made by the Ark itself. This would see the Raven attack a Mirage base and cause as much damage as possible to it before being pulled out by the Ark. It's a little bit of a revenge for the Raven if they choose to take it. Taking any of these, however, we'll see the Raven return to more news. This includes a report that the force Mirage sent in to secure Borbus Mine has not been heard of since they set off, and this has started fear among the Mirage officials, as Navis is almost gone as a corporation. So is this something done by Navis, or a terrible accident? They would not have an answer yet, however the Raven Nexus would be the one sent in to try to rescue these forces if they choose to. If they do, the Raven will see there is no survivors, and the mine is filled with these small, red, empty looking bots that crash into the Raven without care. Still, like always, a return from any mission sees new emails and reports for the Raven. One is that Cress Headquarters has all but dealt with the major legions of the rebelling regional forces, however a rogue AC is still holding out, and they plan to deal with him soon. Mirage will report that the force they sent into the mine was completely destroyed by unknown weapons. However, it is unclear if these are Navi's made weapons or another unknown force. And finally, the electric discharges seen in the desert have been found to be an array of massive generators, and the sheer size of them has many wondering how they are working and who controls them. A new force? Who could this be? Sadly, questions would have to wait, as the Raven is sent by Crest Headquarters to deal with this rogue armoured corps in Baylord City. And perhaps, to the Raven's surprise, they see the Rebel AC is none other than Jinobi. He talks to the Raven about how their roles could have been so easily reversed, and how the relics of the past will never bring mankind prosperity. Reports vary on how this battle went down, with either this being Jinobi's last battle, or him fleeing and being unable to be found. Either result, we'll see Crest fully withdraw from the region, leaving Mirage, Navis and Kisaragi as the only active corporations in the region. However, then there is an email from Navis titled, Last Request. It reads the corporation, even being on the edge of being eradicated by Mirage, continued their research into lost technology, resulting in the activation of a massive weapon. However, they could not control it, as such they require the Raven of Nexus to destroy it. Navis has this massive weapon in one of their last remaining MT storage houses, and as the Raven fights this large grey monster of a machine, it's clear that it seems this lost technology is quite powerful, as the Raven weaves and hides to avoid its blasts. It should be noted here that should the Raven fail here, it is seen that Mirage, being the only corporation with the power and resources in this region, would march on to become the dominant force, taking out Raven's Ark and all corporations in the region as they march on to a total victory. However, this vision of a Mirage rule is not true, as the Raven of Nexus would not fail in putting down this massive weapon, which we would later learn to be named the Lathiathan before returning to one final mission and a few more updates. Navis is no more, with the discovery of the last stronghold which held the Lathiathan, its destruction leaves the corporation without anywhere to go and no more assets, resulting in the end of Navis. Mirage has decided to indefinitely suspend all investigations into the region after the loss of their team in the mine, Cress has fully withdrawn from the region, and Kisaragi is in such disarray due to internal fighting, however research of lost technology goes on. The final mission of the Raven comes from Kisaragi, who sent in a research team into the mine where Mirage lost its forces to the unknown weapons. They write that they fear the team has activated control devices for a lost technology weapon, and they don't want to repeat the same mistakes of the past. It may be too late for the team, but the corporation wants the Raven to take out the control devices. The dive into the mine for the Raven would show an advanced area, with energy weapons and defenses, and these large control devices taking a lot to destroy. Only then for this to happen. Intruder detected. A battle with an unknown red weapon. Its speed and firepower puts the Raven in a real tight spot, pushing the Raven's piloting to the limit as it zips and zaps around at high speed, making targeting difficult. Again, there are reports that should the Raven fail here, a vision of the future sees endless waves of MTs marching towards an AC, 
who fires off their machine gun with shells falling to the ground in great numbers. However, the horde of MTs would never end. Yet this vision again is not what we know happens, as the Raven would beat this unknown foe, only to suddenly see swarms of these small unknown weapons that took out the Mirage forces start to fly at great speed towards the surface. The Raven gives chase and even tries to make a last stand against them, however the unknown weapons keep coming and coming as they dive bomb the surface world, plunging it into six months of a never ending reign of death and destruction. The new resource Navis had found is now destroying the world, and no one could stop it. The year is now EDO 261, and this is where the story of Armacore Nexus ends.